you might think the standard brakes on the Mark 8 Golf are pretty big. And until I saw these, so did I. <laughs> but we'll come back to those a little bit later in the video. The reason why I've got those and loads of other performance upgrades is because in the last video we finished rebuilding the car and drove it for the first time and I hate to say it but I was a bit disappointed. So we all know the way to fix anything like that is by throwing money at it but we do want to try and improve this car and we have loads of parts in order to do that. But we do want to measure the performance so we're going to do a braking test from 60 to 0, measure the distance and then do the same again after we've fitted all of these modifications. And yes this is done on private it land with the landowner's permission. So this is our start line. Let's see what she does. Did you get that? So we went from here all the way to here. So let's check back later in the video and see if we can beat that. So in order to make a start on transforming this car, we need to get it up in the air. So we can stick the car up on the quick jacks and getting off these horrible 18 inch wheels which you guys would be glad to hear will never be going back on this car. And we're going to start by dismantling everything to do with the suspension and brakes on the front end of the car. So I take out the pinch bolt for the suspension, the carrier bolts for the calipers and also the brake lines too. Then once all of those are off, I can push the piston back in the caliper and get that away from the disc. Next up is the T30 which holds the brake disc to the hub. And then just a few taps on the face of the disc and the brake disc should come away from the hub. And now that that's off, I can remove this brake disc shield because that's going to get in the way of our big brake kit. Then the next thing to come out is the anti-roll bar drop link. And then I've got to bring the car down so I can access the top mount bolts underneath the bonnet. And these are hiding underneath the windscreen scuttle so I've got to take off the windscreen wipers. And I actually managed to get away without removing this because once I'd removed the wipers it gave me enough movement to just be able to prop it up and then I could get a ratchet in there to get those bolts out. Now with the four wheel drive VAG cars normally what you've got to do is take out the bolt for the drive shaft because this is going to stop you getting the full range of movement and be able to get the shock absorber away from the car. And another annoying thing which VAG Group cars have is this kind of split style of hub. So I've been out and bought this specific tool for splitting those because otherwise they can be an absolute nightmare to try and get them open enough to be able to get the shock absorber out. And I still didn't quite feel like I had enough movement in it to be able to get that shock absorber out. So I undid the lower ball joints and then that definitely gave a lot more room. So after a good wrestle with it, we finally managed to get it off and then we can look at what else we've got to do to the car in this video. So everything on the front is now disassembled. We've got the suspension out and got the brakes off too. We're going to have to do the suspension on the back as well because obviously we've got matching suspension there, but we've also got a brake upgrade to do as well. Now when it comes to servicing the rear brakes on modern cars, it can become a little bit complicated because of this the electric handbrake. But luckily, thanks to OBD11, I can actually put this into the service mode to allow me to change the rear pads without the need for, you know, dealership diagnostic equipment. So all I do is plug in the OBD11 dongle, hit connect in the app, then in the app section, I go over from adjustments to workshop, and then to brake pads replacement. And then it gives you the full instructions of exactly what to do to be able to change those rear brake pads. So as soon as we hit the open function with brake pads in, or the rear calipers are in the brake pad replacement mode. As you can hear there. 
But there is so much more it can do than just that. Now in the last video I was moaning that the car didn't feel very exciting, so there is actually something which I found in here which can help with that too, which is the throttle pedal response. At the moment my car's set in standard, but it can be given a more responsive throttle pedal, which will give it a more sporty feel, so I'm definitely gonna do that. And as easy as that, it's done. I'm also going to turn on the sound for when I lock and unlock the car. In short, there is loads of features which you can turn on and off using the OBD11 app. Things such as resetting the service intervals and also diagnostics as well. So if you want to take control of your car, grab yourself an OBD11 device using the link in my description and discount code SLICKS. So thank you to the guys at OBD11 for giving me the power to be able to do the rear brake pads on this VW Golf and also for sponsoring this video, but let's get back on with it. Right, now we've got some of the messy stuff out of the way. We can have look at some of the nice new shiny parts and these come from the guys at Bilstein and these are the latest and greatest coilovers from the guys at Bilstein and they are going to be the best thing I can possibly put on the Mark 8. So regular viewers of the channel will know that I've ran Bilstein suspension on a lot of my cars and I'm still yet to be disappointed by it. So these are the Bilstein Evo T1s, they're the newest to the range coilover and well, they look sick don't they? <laughs> so the first thing that I've got to do to fit these new coilovers is take the top mounts off my old suspension so I can press the springs and take those off. And then we can transfer these over to the Bilstein Evo T1s. So then using an allen key to hold the shaft in place and using a deep reach socket I can tighten these up properly. And then we can get both of these back into the car. So again using that hub splitter tool I can drop the coil over into the hub and then push it up so I can bolt the top mount in. So new suspension is now on and looking sweet. I can't wait to see how that rides and how much better it makes it feel. But this is one time that I'm glad that my car is a lower spec because on some of the Golf R's you get a adaptive suspension which then means you have to get an expensive module to put in to cancel out an error code that you get on the dash. Mine hasn't got that so I haven't got to do it. So now the fronts are done, it's time to get on with the rears. So the rears are a much easier job. So all I'm going to do is take the two bolts which hold the top mount into the body of the car out which would have been easier to access if I did take the arch lining out, but I really didn't want to. And then we've got a few different things to remove on this lower arm. So firstly is the rear anti-roll bar drop link, followed by the lower shock absorber bolt, And then to make removing the spring easier, I just undo the bolt which holds the lower arm into the hub. Jesus Christ! And once those are out, we can remove the shock absorber and the spring and look and getting the new ones in. And whilst I'm doing all this, Joe's being super helpful in the background and cleaning out all of the wheel arch liners to make them look as good as the new parts that we're putting on. Eight minutes. Eight whole minutes. So just like the fronts, it's just whizzing off the top mount, transferring that over to the new coilovers, and then that can go back in the car, but we're gonna have to adjust the ride heights later to make sure the car's sitting just right. Now, if you were curious what I'd done with the rebound settings, I'd set all of the coilovers at the softest setting possible, because that means it's gonna be the most comfortable it can be on the road. But if I ever do take the car to a track, I can then turn it up into a stiffer setting, which means it's instantly gonna be adapted for use there too. So now the suspension is all on and bolted up, even though we've still got to adjust it before we put it back on the floor, there's some upgrades we want to do first. Okay, that's the coilovers fully installed now. I don't know what the ride height is going to be like, so I might have to play around with that once I get the wheels on and get it back on the floor. But there's a lot more jobs I've got to do before we can do that. So earlier in the video, I showed you guys this brake disc, and this is what's going to be going on at the front of the Mark 8R. But obviously, the standard calipers and carriers won't work with a disc that size. So there's the old disc, which has just been sat out in the rain. <laughs> You can see this one is a two-piece disc and also much thicker and much wider as well. Is width the right word? Yeah. But that's just only a small piece of the kit. Check out these bad boys. Oh, look at that, go on. Let's have a look. 
Jesus Christ. Right, so this is a six piston caliper made out of CNC'd alley, so it's gonna be lighter than a standard caliper and also perform much better. Also, look at them pads as well. Oh, mate, I'm in love with them. They are just gorgeous. I think I need a minute. I'm taking these to my bedroom. But the first part of that kit which has got to go on is these braided brake lines. Now these are better than the rubber ones because they don't allow a little bit of expansion when you press the brake pedal and the fluids force through it. So that means you get a better brake pedal feel. So we can swap out the standard rubber lines and get rid of those and put on these nice new braided brake lines which have been provided to us by the guys at Racing Line along with those new discs and big brake kit as well. One thing I've liked about all the kit that I've had from the guys at Racing Line is that it is literally a bolt-in replacement. They use all of the factory mounting points, so there's no adaptation needed apart from the part that you're changing out. The next part of this kit is the carrier, which the caliper bolts into. And once that's nice and tight, we can then put on this massive two-piece brake disc. So once the T30's in place for that, it's time for the caliper. I've never been more excited to put something on my car in my life. Bolting's coming in. So this uses two large Allen key bolts which go through the caliper and into the carrier. It just feels sensational. Is this where we find out I've not got the right size Allen key? I've got the Allen key, but I've got a socket. It just looks sick. I'm going to savour this. That's satisfying. They look stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Stupidly good. So once those calipers are bolted in, it's time to put the braided brake line in, which just bolts into the back of the caliper using an 11mm banjo bolt. Well, they are absolutely mental, but you guys will be glad to hear, because I know a lot of you hate the standard wheels off the Mark 8, that they don't actually fit over these brakes anymore. So unfortunately, I'm going to have to get some new ones. What a shame. <laughs> But these brakes and suspension are by far some of the nicest bits I've ever fitted to a car. And I couldn't let these go inside a dirty wheel arch liner. So we've cleaned and ceramic coated them. So hopefully they stay cleaner for longer and should be easier to do as well. So I'm in love. I never want to put wheels back on this car again. Okay, so brakes are now fitted. We're still yet to bleed these up. And for that, we need to go to the interior of the car. But before we bleed the brakes, we've got quite a big transformation to make on this cockpit. And we're going to do this with help from the guys at Wheel Finesse. Now, you've seen these guys on my channel many times before making steering wheels look 10 out of 10. But in this video, we're going to be doing something extra on top of that. So the first one of the interior modifications is a complete Alcantara dash cover. And yeah, transform the dashboard of the Golf into something... A little bit more fancy. Spicy. In preparation for this, the guys at Wheel Finesse scanned a Mark 8 Golf dashboard in order to be able to make this perfectly measured cover. Now, what I've gone for in terms of specification is a very dark grey with a blue stitch because I didn't want to go for black because I thought it might look too much, but I didn't want to go for the matching grey as what's on the seats as I thought that might look a bit washed out and faded. So the way these covers work is they come pre-measured and pre-cut and they're self-adhesive on the back. So what you've got to do is get it in exactly the right position and then peel off the back in section by section until it's in place. Now these guys do the dashboard covers for certain makes and models, but they also do steering wheel covers and airbag covers for the steering wheel as well. So if you are wanting any of those, make sure to go and check them out. I'll leave their Instagram in the description. When you're buying an item off them, make sure to use discount code SLICKS. going to save you a whole 15% off your order. You can thank me later. And now that the dash wrap is finally in place, we can start putting in some of the final trims to finish that off, but that is not the only piece of the interior that we're going to be doing. We've also got a steering wheel cover to go on, and as well as that, we've also got an airbag cover. So Tom gets on to stitching that steering wheel cover on, and you can now see I've done a matching spec on this to what I've done on the dashboard. So it's the grey Alcantara, a blue centre stripe, and blue stitching. Thank you. 
Now, I know what you guys are thinking. I want one of those for my car. Well, you can have one, and also you can specify it to the colors and materials of your choice, and to do so, the link is in the description. But now the steering wheel cover is on. We've got one final piece. And so we now have the Alcantara cover on the dash and the steering wheel, and that is looking wicked. But there is one final piece to finish that off. Check out that bad boy, an Alcantara airbag cover for the steering wheel as well. It is nice. Very nice. Has this not completely transformed the interior of the Mark 8R? I know I need to give everything a bit of a wipe down and a clean, but that is amazing. The airbags themselves have small incisions all the way around the fabrics to retain the original breaking points on the materials to make sure that they are not going to get in the way of the airbags actually deploying. So they're weakened in those areas to make sure they're still safe. So one out of five wheels is done, but we've still got four more to go. So let's take a look at them. I got a queen. She lit me the evening. She ripe like a peach and she snapped me the snippet. Well overdue for that link up in person. Text me to fall through a smurder. She wrote it. Still up with courage. You're doing a service. Pull up to the crib. I'm equipped with the brush. Strokes, you cut throat from the low low when no love goes. Women buddy buddy like it's been dad. When a fuck me looking at the bill stack off the bubbly buddy, I've been stressed out. Now you can't have wheels without tires, and you can't have tires without wheels. Or well, you can, but they're gonna be useless. So I've come down to Wheel Mania and they're gonna fit some new tires on the racing line wheels for me before we get them on the car. Carry the torch, I'm way up the slitty wherever we flow. Came from the co used to rest on the floor. I stitch up my wounds, was born a soldier. Flipping the struggle, I'm taking it worldwide. Hold it down when you talk to me. Say it is what it's supposed to be. Say it loud, but I mean it to you. Yeah. How sick do they look? I'm loving the gunmetal finish. It should tie in perfectly with the carbon on the car. But if you are wondering what tyre choice I've gone for, again, I've gone for the Continental Sport Contact 7, the same as what I went for on the i30N. And that's because the ratings on these tyres match those of the Pilot Sport 4 S's, and they come in at about £100 cheaper a set. So that's a win and a win. Let's go get these back on the car. Now, would it not be a shame to put these manky old little wheel nuts back in with these different and the new wheels which we've just gone to Wheelmania and got tyres fitted for. And they'd be even worse with those horrible plastic covers that VW seem to put over the wheel nuts too. So we're going to upgrade the standard wheel bolts for these. This is a stud and nut conversion. Well, this is the stud. Basically what this does is it goes in place of the wheel bolt, sits in the hub like that, so it makes it much easier to put your wheels on and off much quicker. And also, I think they look a lot better too. So I've got these from LJP Motorsport. I'm gonna leave his Instagram in the description. He's one of my very close friends. So if you contact him through his Instagram using discount code SLICKS, he's gonna give you some money off your stud and nut conversion. Just tell him the make and model of the car and how many stud holes it's got and he will sort you out. Let's get these on. Now, when you're putting these on, you wanna make sure they're not gonna come out. And the way to do that is a little bit of Loctite on the end of it and then making sure they're properly torqued to spec. Now, once the Loctite's in and the studs are in, you've got to torque them up to 35 newton meters, if I remember right, which would be easier if we'd bled the brakes by this point, so I could just get someone to sit in the car and put their foot on them. But I've just put a screwdriver in the disc for now, and hopefully that will do it. There we go, 35. Hello, hiya. Do you like the new brakes? Do you like them? Do you like them? And what about the studs? Yes, I like them too. What about the suspension? Yes, it's very good. So now that the new studs are in, we're almost ready to put those wheels on the car. But first, we've got to do the rear brake upgrade. So we've got to take the sliders out of the calipers in order to be able to take the caliper off the car. And the Mark 8R has some really annoying carrier bolts. They're M14 multi-splines and they're really tricky to access. So there's quite a lot of stuff you've got to undo to be able to get to them. But once they're off, the carriers can come off the car. Then in order to get the caliper over the new disc with the new pads in, I've got to wind back the piston and then push that back in. Now there is a proper tool to do this, but I didn't have it. And once that's in, the old disc can come off and we can replace that with this upgrade from VBT. Now you can see here the size difference between the standard one and the upgrade, but the guys at VBT have also drilled these custom for me so they match my front brake upgrade as well. Now obviously the standard brakes won't fit over those new bigger discs without a bit of work. So what we've got from the guys at VBT along with the other bits is also these brake caliper adapters. So what they do is they bolt into the carrier and then the, this all bolts into the car which then gives you the capability to run that wider disc. So I can bolt this adapter to the carrier before bolting it to the car. 
And apart from the two countersunk hex bolts which come with the kit, everything else it uses is OEM equipment. So once the carrier is back over the disc, we can then put the pads back in and the caliper back on and we're ready to rock. So the next job is to bleed up the front brakes because we've put on new brake lines and obviously the new calipers and lost a lot of brake fluid. So we need to replace that but make sure no air is in the system. Because at the moment the brake pedal goes right the way to the floor, which is not what you want. So I'm gonna take the role of pumping the brake inside the car and Thomas here is going to be on the nipples. Caliper's <laughs> <laughs> got two, it's got one on the outside and one on the inside. Which one do you start with, Tom? I think I'm going to start with this one. I think, yeah, we can push the fluid out, get as much air out there and just check the back. Sounds good to me. So we topped up the brake fluid to replace what we'd already lost and then I hopped inside the car. This interior is just beautiful now, isn't it? Mm. So my job is to pump up the brake pedal to get pressure in there, then I've got to hold the pressure while Tom releases the nipple, which should hopefully release some air, and eventually, when there's no air left, the brakes are good to go. Pedal is going down, going down, going down, going down, floor. Going down slow. And up. 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 Now finally, after all that hard work, we can get these new wheels on and finish off Probably the most perfect suspension brake wheel setup on any Mark 8 R in my opinion. I did forget to mention that because I want to keep these new brakes and wheels looking perfect like the arch liners, I ceramic coated them way before fitting them. So you can see here how much easier the stud and nut conversion makes it to put a wheel on because you can just hang it on the studs and then put your nuts in place and tighten them up. Now I'm glad that is done because this is the state of the rear pads. They definitely needed changing, and so did the fronts as well, to be fair, because, well, yeah, they'd probably be about the same. So, after 20,000 miles and your brake pads looking like this, we know the car, especially with the rears looking like that, this car has not had an easy life. But now it's equipped with massive front and rear brakes, ready for the future for whatever someone's got to throw at it, these brakes will be able to do it. So now I'm just gonna get the car back on the floor and check the height of the suspension. I'm 100% sure to be honest with you, it's gonna need adjusting and I'm hoping just not too much. Oh, front looks sick. Back definitely needs to come down. But front, not bad, it looks good. I suppose now the only thing left to do is go and try out these new upgrades and see how much of a difference they've made. But I nearly forgot I've got to put the R emblem on the side and also a little finishing touch on the back window. Let's see how much difference and better hopefully this car feels with the new suspension on. But straight away I can tell you it definitely feels much tighter. I've set all the suspension to the softest setting for road use because you can easily turn it up or down just by using the knobs on the bottom of the shocks. It's a great balance between the comfort side of things and also stiffening things up for performance. Now the brakes, I can tell you there's definitely been some, been some R&D go into those because it still feels like a factory brake pedal. It doesn't feel super bitey when you put, like when you put massive calipers on you know, a normal stock car. You can tell these have been designed properly for this car because it still feels normal, you know, completely normal to be honest with you. But when you press on them hard, like this, Jesus Christ, they really, really stop. <laughs> so I'm well and truly happy with those upgrades. It feels like definitely a much better car already, but we still need to see how much of an impact that's gonna have over our braking distance, which we measured the stop one at the start of this video. Okay, here we go. Hopefully it shows that it's performing better than it was before. Otherwise, I'm gonna look a bit stupid, but I've got high hopes that it will, because those old brake pads were knackered, the discs were knackered, and also we've upgraded the size of it, we've upgraded the tires, we've upgraded the suspension. So pretty much everything that's gonna affect the performance of these brakes. Okay, here we go. There's 60 and braking. Oh, it's good, it's good. So here's the start line and here is where we finished off from 60 mile an hour. Excuse my shadow, but here is where we finished before. Are you ready? And there is where we've managed to stop now. That is a mental difference, really. It's almost, I'd say it's about two thirds of the braking distance and that's without them even being fully bedded in properly. And if I'm being 100% truthful, I don't think I pressed the pedal as hard as I could have. So there's definitely more in the tank with this. So not only does the car look better after all that work, but it drives so much better as well with those better tires, better suspension, better brakes all around. It's been a good video, really. But we still haven't actually managed to look at the speed and performance of this car. We still need to make the car faster and also sound better as well, but that's gonna have to wait for a future video. But if you have enjoyed this one, 
don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe if you're not already, and I'll catch you next time.